In today's video, I'll be going over how to create this standalone design. It has columns, footings, beam, and overall structure here. So one of the things that we can change is obviously the overall size. We have the depth of the columns that we can play with. We can also go here to how wide they're going to be. Then we start getting into the foundation and the wall height here. We have the foundation stem wall. Then here we have the beam. We have the offset for the foundation or footing for those columns. And then the depth of the footing. At the end, we kind of create this overall beam, which we saw here. And this is going to determine the height of where that is located. And lastly here, we created this overall dome that we have the ability to change the height. So let's go change the upper limit here. And using the MD slider, we can play around with how this is going to be formed. Now this bottom one does need to be here at the bottom, but the top one we can choose where it is. And it doesn't have to be all the way up there. We can even change this. And so I'll be going over all those steps right now. So to start, first thing we're going to do is go here and bring in a point. So we'll go here to construct point. Then we'll go into a point component. This way we can change the location at any moment. Now we can move on to creating the overall diameter of the structure. What we'll do is create a circle. So we'll go here to a circle and plug in the point as the plane. So the location of it and then the radius will go here to 50. And since this is going to be like a 50 foot, let's say diameter, this would actually be the radius. So we can actually Divide this by two. So we can have the overall radius or diameter for the design. So structure. So this would be technically the outside face of what would be the design. Now what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll offset it to the inside and basically create the overall thickness of that structure. So we'll take this and go to offset curve and plug in the circle into the curve. Now we'll plug in the distance. We'll actually have to bring in a negative because it's actually offsetting to the outside. So we'll want to offset, let's say 1.5 to the inside. And of course, we can always change these with our sliders. Now we can move on to creating one of the segments. So what we'll do is we'll also have to take the, we'll have to create kind of like a center line, um, but we won't do that right now. For now, we'll take endpoints and we'll plug that into both circles. So we'll I'll create a copy of this one. I want the endpoint of this one and the endpoint of this one, which now I can connect. So I'll go ahead and create a line segment between the start point of this one and the endpoint of this one. And actually, I want it the opposite. I want this to be the start point and then this to be the endpoint. So now with that, that's going to be the overall segment. Now I do want to offset the center one. This way we have a center line as to where that column is going to sit. So we'll take this and rather than offsetting it 1.5, we'll do that again. But this time we'll divide by two. So we'll go here, divide by two. And so now that places that offset right there in the middle. So now with that, with that dividing it by two, when we plug it in, we have that center line. 
So we can take this, we can offset it to one side, then to the other. So we'll take this and we'll go to offset curve. Now we can take this line and we can offset it here. So we have offset it by the distance of one by default. So let's change that to 1.5. And now we'll do a copy here and then take this and go to a negative component. And this way we can do the opposite to the other direction. What happens though, is that when you have something that you're offsetting to both sides, basically uh, from the center, you're going to go 1.5 and then 1.5, which is overall three. So we actually need to take this and divide by two. And then when we divide this by two, now we can plug that into the negative. And now it gives us a true value because it's going to be half of 1.5, half of 1.5, giving us the overall 1.5. So we can take these two and either connect them with a loft, or we can also bring in the endpoints of both of these and connect them with the line segment, right? So we have the endpoint of this, the start of this one and the end of this one, and then the end of the other one and the end of the other one. So now we can take these and this is a lot better than lofting it because we're just creating line segments that we can then join. So let's plug all of these together. I'll flatten the input. And with that, we have created this segment. So now if I disable the preview on all of this, and ultimately this, I think this line segment that's here in the middle. Um, so now let's move some of the sliders around and I'll show you that it all updates kind of with it. So we have the overall size, we have the overall depth with the center line. Then we have here to one side and the other. So by, we can do three feet one side, then two feet the other side, or three by three. And now with this, we can take this and create our footing. So what we'll do is we'll take this, we will create the footing, then create the column, and then at the end create kind of that beam. So let's take this and go to a boundary surface. We can take this and create a little stem wall for our footing. So I'll take this and go to extrude curve or extrude, just extrude. And then we'll have, we'll plug in that surface into the base and then bring in a negative component because we want to extrude this down in the unit Z. So we want to plug those in. Now we'll go here to 2.5. And so we have this Z vector that we basically extruded this down. We can also move this curve down. Then We'll plug in the same vector down and we can take this and now offset it to the outside to create a bit of a foundation and then extrude that down. So we'll go here to offset curve. We'll plug in a value of let's say 1.5 and I always use kind of 1.5 or let's say 0.8 if I want a slider with less than 10. And now here we can basically offset this. Now we can turn it into a surface and extrude it down. So we'll go here to boundary surfaces. And now I'll take this, copy it because that's basically an extrude with a slider that extrudes down. So I can tap alt makes a copy of that. Now we can plug in this new surface 
as my input. Now we can change this. So let's organize some of the stuff that we've been doing here. Let's start by column width. We'll move on here to column depth. Actually, this is going to be width. This is step. And then we'll move on to this one being foundation stem wall. This is going to be our foundation offset. And this is going to be our footing depth. I'll disable the preview on everything that I don't really need, which is going to be all of these surfaces or all of these steps that don't include the overall extrusion. Now with this, we can technically take this in a way around, but we don't want to do that quite yet because we want to create the overall column. We have this surface. Now we're going to take that surface and we're going to extrude again, but to a different height. So I'm moving this over because I want to copy these, slide it up, tap, alt, to make the copy here. Now instead of negative, we're going to get rid of that, and overwrite it with the positive. And here we're going to create the wall or column height. And if we don't have enough here, we can double click on this and just change the upper limit max to, I don't know, 20. I think I would have a column bigger than that. So we'll just say something like about 12. Cool. So that's basically what I wanted to get done before we move on to the next step, which is going to be to array this around that um, center, right? So we'll take this, we'll take this one, this one, and this one, and we'll do something called curve array. So we know that if we have a the center line, so let's group this and call this. So it just basically gives it a color. And if it, mine looks white, it's because I set my default to white. And you could do that by changing the color and then making it your default. Now with this, we can right click here, center line. Now we can use this as our array curve. We can plug in all of these separately. So we'll start first with the column. The count is going to determine how many copies. So we'll just go here to four. Now we'll copy this down here like this. Now we can also plug in the next one. I think it's better up here. So now we'll take this one, plug it into this one. Now we've done the stem wall. And if you want those two to be together, we can technically do a solid union between the foundation stem wall and the foundation footing. Now we can plug that flattened, making sure that it's one close B rep. Now we can use that as our second array. So we only have to technically do two curve arrays. And if you see this one darker than the other ones, it's because when you do an array, 
it'll actually give you the original one so we don't have to preview that one to see it correctly. So far, we've created the diameter, the depth, width, the height of the column, the depth of the footing foundation wall stem wall and that's because sometimes you want to pour concrete here and you want this not to sit exactly on the ground if it is uh let's say wood or for a uh, specific material that you don't want um, to get wet so that's just something to keep in mind so here the stem wall we'll make it kind of short and then we'll have here the foundation depth and then the offset make these footings larger or smaller And of course, lastly, creating a, let's say, dense array of them going around the circle. So to also simplify this, let me explain it one way, is we want to create a module. Once you create the module, then you can array it. And technically, once you array it, we have all of these parameters that we can still edit and therefore edit the entire design at once. So with that, we have our center line which we're now going to move up the same height of this column and then offset it to create a circular beam that goes that supports a structure above let's get into that with the center line which we have here labeled we're now going to move this is going to be the wall height Right, so now we're going to go find it says column height, and now we can plug this z vector into here because we already have that. So we want to tie it to the overall column height. Now we can take this and further develop what the beam is going to look like. Now we can get kind of crazy, but let's keep it simple by just offsetting this to one side. We can offset it by the same as the beam, but I actually want to make this independent from the offset of the column. So what I'll do is I'll take this and we'll once again offset to each side. Now I can do that again and which I wouldn't mind, but I want to show you that we can actually copy this because we already have offset here columns width. So this is going to offset to both sides. So I can take both of these, just tap alt, bring it over here and plug in this one these two what it does is i can visualize that this is going to offset that curve in both ways this is going to be the beam beam width and then the depth is going to be the height so and we can always change these two so i'm not too worried so we'll take these and we'll preview them and we see, oh, look, it offsets to the same because when we copied it, it kind of kept it at the same. So now we can decrease this and now create a, an extrusion using this. So what we'll do is we'll go here to boundary surfaces, which we know that when we plug in both the outside and the inside one holding down shift and I flatten the input. Now we have this that we can extrude up to create that beam. So that's how simple it can be, but there are other ways that we can achieve that segment. Um, and maybe, maybe I'll show that, but we'll see how far we get along with this. So we'll take this and we'll go to extrude and then extrude in the direction Z. So basically up. And then we'll plug in a value. So beam width, beam. Height, depth. So 
that creates the overall theme. So let's play around with some of these things. See that we can do pretty cool things here. Some of these parameters. Let's move this around. All right, and let's lower the amount of array copies that we made. Great. So now what we have to do is create a roof for this. So what I wanted to create was just a generic or a very simple dome that can have an opening on the inside, but we're just going to create the basic form uh, because I've kind of gone over how to develop surfaces and break them up and do a bunch of different patterns many times, but I want to focus on just overall general forms with this one. So with that being said, we'll take Notice that we have those two. We also have the center line. So we're going to take that center line and move it up here by the same height as the depth of the beam. We're going to move. Which one? This one. This is the center line of the beam. So I can also group that and label it. And we can take this and plug that into the geometry and plug in our depth into our motion. So with this, now we have the base form or the base geometry for our dome. And I've done this in a few other videos, so um, check out the list of videos where I kind of create other domes if that's what you're interested in. For this one, we'll take the overall circle. We'll bring in an area component, which will basically give us their center point. Then we can take that center point and move it vertically. So we're going to create the height of the dome. So the centroid, we're going to plug into the geometry to move up in the Z direction. And we'll plug in a value, let's say 1.50 for the height. Then we're going to get the endpoint. So here's the thing. Now we can take these two and extrude it by the length here. But since we don't technically have that specific length because we started with the outside face, then we offset it halfway and then brought it up. But technically we don't have that. The way to extract it would be to go to endpoints. which is here, and now create a line segment between the start and this endpoint. We'll go to start, then this other start point to create this, and we'll also create a line segment between the point down here and the point up here, and you'll see why. So we'll create a line segment between the centroid being the start point and this one being the end point. So what we'll do now is this line actually contains the size of that, that diameter. So we'll take this and we'll go to length. And now we can use the length of that, which is 10, and we can extrude. Actually, that's wrong. This one's this one. So I'll use this line here, and then the length and the direction is going to be the same. So actually, I don't need that length because this is going to give me a magnitude and a direction. And it's going to extrude it by the same as that line. So a lot of the time, I, a lot of the times, what I do is I'll go to extrude and plug in a value or like a vector, but a line segment that has a magnitude and a direction in a specific length can work as well as your extrusion direction because technically it's a vector. So with that, we have this. 
With this surface, we can now extract some points and revolve it around this center line. So this is going to be the rotation axis, and you'll see here. So what we'll do is we'll take this extrusion, and let's do it. Let's go to Evaluate Surface. Let's remember to reparameterize. And let's bring in an MD slider. Now we can we don't have to use an MD slider. We could use other methods, but if you like this one, it's visual and it helps a lot to kind of see what you're doing. So I'll go here to bottom right, plug it in, and so you'll see that we have with an MD slider, as long as we reparameterize, which means that it'll take this and turn it into zero to one and zero to one, and basically visualize this. 0 to 1, 0 to 1, becoming this surface 0 to 1 and 0 to 1. And so therefore, wherever I place this MD slider, which is a way to extract a point um, relative to this graph, we can now go to the bottom right, then holding down shift, I'll add another input, then we'll move this up a little bit, and then I'll create another one and hold down shift, plug it in. Now, the important thing is that you do that in progression. You know that this is the first one, this is the second one, and this is going to be the third one. With these three points here, we have three locally defined values. We can now use an interpolated curve or a NURBS curve. It doesn't really matter. You can even use a polyline to create that line segment. With this, now we can array it around to create the overall form. So let's go here to revolution, which is going to revolve a curve around an axis. So we'll take this curve segment, plug that into the input, and the axis is going to be this one, this vertical one, because it's going to be the one that the center rotation line. And so with this, now we have the ability to create an opening, like, like so. Get kind of crazy with some of these. And that's because this has a degree. So we can also play around with the degree. And that will, let's see, let's, let me show you here. This can also determine more of how the curve is going to function. And I think it does not like. So you can see that there are a few different things that we can work with here. But really, what's going to make the most difference is going to be where the center point is located. And I actually like doing this in elevation view. Because I can see here when it kind of goes up from the point. I don't want that because I don't want water shedding into the hole. Uh, we do want it to shed down. And then we can make it more drastic at the beginning. Or we can make it more subtle at the beginning and kind of drastic at the top. It really depends on what we're trying to do here. But the cool thing is just having the ability to do that. Now what happens is when we revolve a surface like this, this becomes very thin, so this doesn't have any dimensionality to it. So ultimately, we can kind of offset this and turn it into a solid. Or what I like to do is here, we can offset this. This offset will be determined off of the plane that that curve has. So now we can take this one and this one, and we can close it using endpoints. With the endpoints, we can connect them using a line segment from start, and then the endpoint goes to the start, which creates that segment. And if we gave it a value, let's say 1.5, like I always do, we see that we can change that like this. And we can do that again for these. Now we can join those using join curve, 
And they can go find that over there, but that one's fairly easy to do. So we can join it. And we can join it using the outside, the original one, and the two line segments that close those endpoints. So I'm holding down shift to get that plus sign and I can add those in. I'll go ahead and flatten the input. And lastly, I'll take this and I'll create a round so we can round this off. So we'll go here to fill it. And we can change that. The other thing is this is offsetting to the outside. And I feel like it'd look better if it offsets to the inside. So we can just give this a negative value. And now instead of using this original curve, we can use this one as our segment to so this would be more of a solid that is created with that segment. So let's disable the preview on most of this stuff. Oh, I messed up. And they are intersecting here. So in that case, either move it up or we can do a Boolean difference or a solid difference between the top and the overall beam. If I were to take this, middle click and bake, For some reason it's not baking, so let's see if it does bake object here. Hmm. It says invalid BRAP, and it could be this. Sometimes that kind of messes it up. We'll just bake it without the rounding off the edges, but the, the real reason why I wanted to show that is just to show when you do the Boolean difference here, shaded mode, then it actually sits it in here and it gives it a nice way for it to sit. Um, so that's one of the things I wanted to show. Okay, so now let's delete this one. Let's play around with this. And this top one is going to be okay cool so with that we'll kind of end the video I wanted to show overall how to create this design what I'll be doing is I'll be doing a render of this I'll be baking it and just doing a few iterations seeing what looks cool and if you want me to go further with this design, we can. We can do way more things getting more into the landscape. But I wanted to show how to create a standalone structure from beginning to end using a lot of the methods that I've been sharing on my YouTube channel. So like I said, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below. Ideas for other videos, also let me know. And uh, hopefully you found this interesting. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. If you'd like to get a hold of the script that I created for this video, check out my website, capetidavid.com. There you can become a Script Bulb member where you can access all of the video scripts that I've created for my YouTube. You can access also the script store where I have optimized scripts. And lastly, if you want to learn Grasshopper and you've never tried it, or you want to share that with someone, 
I have a six module course that will help anyone get started. I post videos like this that will teach people how to get started using Grasshopper. So make sure to subscribe for future content. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you next time.